Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite Gimp with a Limp, and I am here with something very cool to show you guys. This is the Barracks Emperors, a card game set during the time of crisis. This is actually on P500 on GMT's uh, game list right now. This, as far as I know, I don't think there are any other prototype copies of this game out right now. This might be the only one, and so I'm able to actually show this to you guys. Uh, definitely make sure you check out uh, this one on P500. If you haven't, it is set in the same period as Time of Crisis. If you play that, unfortunately, I haven't. I need to because so many people keep telling me, go play Time of Crisis, and they want to see me do a playthrough of it, so I'll have to look into that later. But that's neither here nor there. You actually notice that some of the graphics on this game come from Time of Crisis, but we'll get into that here in a minute. Before we get started, uh, I do have to apologize that it might be a touch darker than some of my other videos. Due to the components that this prototype is made out of, they're all glossy as hell. Uh, you can see they're, they've got these shiny coatings on them. And no matter where I put my lights, I could not get uh, most of the glare. If you can see, I got uh, a little bit still left over there. It's just very hard when you've got this shiny material to have the light not pointing anywhere near at it. So basically I've got all my lights pointing up to the ceiling and I'm trying to reflect light down to it. And for the most part, it's light enough now that you guys can see it, but it might be just a touch dimmer than my usual fare. I'm oh, sorry, uh, it's nothing I can do about it. All right, but you guys are looking at this board and you're going, okay, Gippy, tell us what the deal is. Well, this is a trick taking card game in which you're trying to capture emperors using your influence to gain the emperors, right? So the emperors, these cards here, all the, the red, the blue, and the yellow are the emperor cards. You can actually tell because it's listed down on the map, emperor. And these cards, which will be in your hand, are called influence cards, and they come in a variety of different suits and values. And when I say suit, I mean the color, all right? So think of like a, a deck of cards, you know, your uh, spades, your clubs, you know, that type stuff. Same principle here in the fact that you're going to have your different suits. So you've got your military, your, uh, I had to look it up to remind myself, uh, military, your senate, and your populace, right? So that's your red, your blue, and your yellow. And then your gray is actually your barbarian faction that is in the game as well. So there's four different suits, but there's three primary suits in the game. And then this one that kind of uh, changes things up, but they can be captured as well. And then the influence cards will have a variety of values ranging from either zero on up to eight, which is the highest value that the card can have. Now there's text at the bottom of the cards and we're gonna get into that later. I'm probably gonna do a handful of videos on this game uh, just because of the, the nature of it. It's, it's no by no means a hard game to learn or to understand but there's a couple of different versions of it, right? There's one that is called the plebeian, and that's where you ignore all the texts that are on the card. So like the barbarian card here and these influence cards, you're not worried about the text that's on them. You're just basically playing for the suits and the values and capturing the emperors, right? And then there's the patrician version of the game where you're playing with everything, and that's the much more in-depth version of the game. So this first video, I'm probably just going to go over the plebeian version of the game so you get the basics and you understand what the core of the gameplay actually is. Second video, we'll probably do a uh, patrician overview of how that's going to work. And then I'm going to see if I can get uh, Gippy's gal to sit down with me because one of the best ways to really grasp this game is to see some people play it and have her sit with me and just at least play around so you guys can see how the card game itself is going to work. Now, before we go any further, I am going to mention that there is a solo version of this game as well, but I'm not going to focus on that as much right off the bat because I think the, the core of the game really needs to be explained from a multiplayer point of view. Uh, it's really based around the four players that actually you guys can see around all of these emperor, uh, emperor cards are the swords, the eagles, the columns, and the wreaths, and that's each one of the different players, all right? So based on where I'm sitting, I would actually be the sword player because they're all pointing towards me. And then others would be sitting around the table there, 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 and they would have their sides that they're trying to gain control of as well. So like I said, there is a solo version. We're not going to worry about that too much uh, right now. I want you guys to get the basics of the game. Okay. So like I said, your goal is to gain control of the emperors and you're going to do that by capturing them. 
And we'll go over how you capture them here in just a little bit because that involves a lot of back and forth with the influence cards. But when you end a round, you're going to tally up your control. So let's say for my round, I had gained control of these four emperors here, right? I had captured them through the course of gameplay. Well, scoring actually works very simply. You're gonna get one point for each one of the emperors you have and barbarians because they can actually be captured as well. But again, patrician game, we'll get into that later. But you also get three points, three bonus points for a set collection. So for every red, blue, and yellow that you have as a set, you would gain bonus points. So if these four cards were the emperors that I had captured for this round, I would actually have seven points. Four, one each for the emperors themselves, and then three bonus points for having a set. So it behooves you to go for a variety of different emperors. And that's the really the whole point of this game is to take little tricks and cause the cards to fluctuate in a certain way so you can gain control of a certain emperor while trying to block your opponents from also getting the emperors they need or keeping you from getting the emperors you need. It's a whole lot of back and forth. It made me think of kind of the uh, the ancient civilizations. I mean, the, the gameplay is very much different. It's not in that ballpark in the least, but just in that got you when it comes to your opponent, right? That back and forth, you know, you think you're doing well and then your opponent pulls something out and it takes it from you and then you take it back from them. And that just jab and jab, 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 back and forth. This game has a lot of that going on. Now, I will say before, you know, I go any further on it, that uh, some people have asked the, the designer of the game, like, okay, well, is this, you know, Time of Crisis the card game? No, it is not Time of Crisis the card game. He did explain that to me. Yeah, like I said, it's set in the Time of Crisis universe. You're going to see a lot of the Time of Crisis art on these influence cards, barbarian cards, stuff like that. But it's not Time of Crisis the card game. This is its own individual game, uh, very set different from Time of Crisis. All right, so looking around the board, just a quick overview of the setup, you can see that the emperors are going to be randomly placed across the board in their squares. Each one of these places has emperor underneath it, so you can tell they go there. If you are portray, uh, playing a patrician game, the high-end game, you will place barbarians where it says barbarian homeland start. That means one, a barbarian will start there, and then there's other barbarian homelands that they can be placed there during the course of gameplay if you are playing with them. Uh, over here to our left side, we have a Emperor draw deck, which will come into play. Let's say you're playing a three round game, you capture the amounts of Emperors. Once the round ends, any Emperors that are left on the board will be uh, grabbed up, put back into the draw deck, shuffled together, and then randomly dealt back out for the second or uh, third consecutive rounds. So you've got plenty of Emperors to draw through. There is a uh, set of emperors up here for a different section of the game. Over here is the draw section for our influence cards. We've got our draw pile, uh, discard pile. And then over here is what's called the forum. I'll get into that more specifically when we start talking about our influence cards, but just understand this is where you're going to draw for your influence cards after you've played one. And make sure you pay attention here because you have to play a certain value to draw certain cards. But once a card's been drawn from here, another will be taken from the draw pile, put in there. So this is going to stay full until this runs out. Okay, so I've done a lot of talking and I know you guys are going, okay, well, get me shut up and just tell us how the game is played. All right, so I've got myself a hand of cards down here. Okay, these are my influence cards that I've started with. So I've set us up for a four player game. I've actually set deck of cards there, there, there for each of the other players. And we'll get to them here in a sec. But let's say this is my hand of cards that I have gotten dealt and it's my turn and I get to place a card, okay? Well, since I am the sword faction, I get to place one of my influence cards and one of my influence cards must go connecting to the sword faction on one of the emperors, all right? So I have to be able to place one of my cards uh, next to these swords, wherever I place it, now it can be obviously next to an eagle or a wreath because obviously they're going to be there, but I could never place my card somewhere where it was unable to connect to a sword, okay? And just the same way for the eagle faction, they always have to be placing one of their influence cards next to an eagle. 
uh, same with the columns and same with the wreaths. Whenever you're placing your card down, you have to be able to place it there. And then if you can't, it uh, causes the round and uh, things like that later on. We'll uh, we'll touch on that when we get into the the round ending segment. Okay, so when you're looking at it and you're trying to capture these emperors, right? The basic gist of it is the highest card wins, right? And I know you're going, okay, well, that seems pretty basic. And it is. It's a little more in depth than that. And it does get way more in depth than that if you play with the patrician uh, rules. But that's the shorthand of it. The highest numerical value will win, but the tr suit, the trump suit of the emperor, will trump the highest value. So you're going, okay, what does that mean? Well, let's say all these cards are played out. I play there, eagle plays there, column plays there, and wreath plays there. Now to capture an emperor and to gain a point, he must be surrounded as this red emperor is now, okay? Once all sides, all four sides, are surrounded by an emperor, that's the point when the last person who plays the card that places that down to surround the emperor, that's when it's going to be scored to see who gains control of the emperor. Now, just looking at these cards now without taking into consideration, we don't have any others around yet, this emperor would be taken by the sword player. And I know you're going, well, Gimpy, there's a seven over there, so why does the six take, uh, take the emperor over the seven? Well, the six is going to take it because it is the Trump suit, right? So this emperor is the military faction, the red faction. Red takes the, the highest red card, will take control. Now, in this situation, just this situation alone, what would happen is the winning card would be taken. It would be placed in our discard, uh, discard pile over here. And then the Emperor would be captured by the Sword Faction player. So I would take this Emperor and I would place it in my scoring section. This Emperor spot will stay empty until the start of the next round when more Emperors come out and have chances for scoring. Now you can place down a card in which case more than one Emperor can be captured and then you would resolve them in order. I'll set up something to show you guys that here in a sec. But let's say it were different cards, okay? It wasn't these, and instead, let's switch this influence card out instead. Instead of that seven, it was a six instead. When you're going, well, Gimpy, how's that gonna change it? Because the Trump uh, card is still, the Trump suit is six, so why doesn't he still take it since he's the Trump? Well, that's because in this game, if the numbers match, they cancel each other out, okay? so any numbers that are matching are ignored. That's part of the trick of this game is placing down things to cause other cards to be ignored. Well, in this case, the two sixes would cancel each other out and now you're just looking at the two remaining cards, which means we would look at our highest remaining trump value. If there was one, this two would actually be the highest remaining and the eagle faction would capture the emperor. Okay, so I shuffled things around a little bit and I placed out a few more cards to get, show you guys another example because that's really the easiest way to understand what this game is seeing examples of play, right? So let's say me as the sword faction, all the cards are on the board as such at this point and I decide I'm going to place this card here, okay? And that completes not only this emperor, but this emperor, all right? Let's just say, or actually, let's say I place this card here instead because otherwise this one should have already been resolved. So better example. I place this card here. That causes this emperor to be surrounded and this emperor to be surrounded. Well, the order that you resolve them is determined by the player who placed the card, right? The active player. And you want to really consider the order in which you're resolving because remember, this is still the same as what we had before, right? The sixes are canceling each other out, which means the two wins, right? So if I want to capture certain cards, I need to be careful. If I resolve the lower emperor first, it actually causes this card to be removed, right? And the resolving of that emperor, which means this one's no longer surrounded and you don't actually complete it and capture that emperor, which could be something that you want because let's say, you know, me as the sword player, 
looking at it, well, currently these two sevens would cancel each other out. And if I place this card here as an example, completing that, if we resolve this one first, since the seven, the trump suit is canceled by the other seven, that means any number can win. The other highest number is a six, so it actually be the wreath faction that won. So uh, maybe I don't want the wreath to capture this emperor because you can place a card that causes one of your opponents to, to capture an emperor. You know, anyone can do that. So you're trying to place your cards in your best interest to make the emperor come in your direction, whichever, you know, faction is your side. You want that square to be best, but then you have to constantly be considering, well, when I'm placing this here, it's not only affecting just this emperor, the one that I'm, you know, thinking about, it's also affecting this emperor and this emperor and this emperor. And that's really where the trick taking comes into this. And that's not even getting into the fact that these cards have special effects when you get into the patrician level of the game. Like just looking at R2, the one we've been talking about, reinforcements. You may add a plus two marker to another military influence card in a legal space. So you could add that plus two to a six or the six or the seven, and it could change up the entire flow of the game. And there's multiple different uh, special abilities on these other cards. Like I said, we'll get into that in the Patrician one. But now you're starting to kind of see what I was talking about, about this being a trick taking game in that you want to place your cards in the best possible place for you. And if not, maybe in the worst possible place for your enemy. All right, so to continue finishing out our example, let's say that we had resolved this one. So this goes over here to our draw pile or our discard pile. This one is captured. And in this case, it would actually be captured by the column player, but I'm just going to set it off to the side for now. After that was done, the player who placed that card, the active player, has to draw another card over here from the forum. And the card that you can draw from here is determined by the card that you played, okay? So when you're looking here, you see the numbers two or less, four or less, six or less, or eight or less. So these are going to be uh, kind of backwards if you think about it. This is going to be ascending order over here. So the smaller card that you play, the larger card that you actually get to take. So in the example that I just showed, since let's say I placed that two, I could take this high value eight card. But if I take that, then the next one's gonna flip and we see that's a four. So all of these are gonna be pushed up and then that one's gonna take that place. So it's always going to be ascending order. So you gotta think about it this way is that the higher card that you place, the lower card that you're going to get back in return. Now it's going to be random what's over here. It may be, you know, placing, uh, maybe the form's going to be set up in such a way that there's a good mix of high cards over here just because you've drawn a whole bunch of them uh, in a row. In that situation, maybe it's going to be a good idea for you to try to get some of those lower cards that you have in your hand out because you are, uh, excuse me, some of those higher cards, your better cards, it'd be a good idea to play them because it doesn't matter since, you know, you've got a better chance of getting, you know, better cards in your hand because you want the highest number and a variety of suits to give yourself some options. But keep in mind, like I said, it's not just highest number wins, it's the fact that you can play cards in such a way like this, where they're matching, to cause them to cancel each other out, and they can even be in such a way that three of them are canceling each other out. So there's multiple different tricks that you can take to this game to affect the emperors, to affect the influence cards, and like I said, that's not even getting into the patrician special rules of the game. That's just talking about the colors and the uh, numerical values. Now, talking about you know capturing the emperors, there are some uh, situations, scenarios that can happen. Let's say you have an emperor like this that does get surrounded, but he just happens to get surrounded by all matching numbers. So, okay, what do you do? They're all canceling each other out. And that one, the emperor is just going to be left alone and he's going to stay there because obviously as you play other cards and these emperors get taken out, one of these will get affected by something else going on the board more than likely, which will cause the uh, 
the space to open up because if this scores for up here, then another card can be placed there and potentially win this Emperor. So you would just ignore it in that situation. There are the rare circumstances where you can have an Emperor completely surrounded by barbarians. If he is uh, completely surrounded by uh, barbarians, in that case, the Emperor is considered to be killed and no one captures him. Or similar circumstance, if it's only a barbarian that can score it, you know, a zero, because all the others are canceling each other out. Same scenario, the Emperor is going to be considered to have been killed off by the barbarians and no one gets to actually score him and capture him. Something else you have to keep in mind when it comes to this is, let's say you have an Emperor that scored He's surrounded over here and he gets scored and taken off. And then you have a card that's just out here in BFE. So it's going to get removed as well and put into this, this card pile. Anytime you have an Emperor card that gets taken and captured, if there's an Influence card or a Barbarian card that is not orthogonally adjacent to an Emperor, once the Emperor has been removed, then that card is going to be pulled off and placed over here into our discard. So you're going to keep going back and forth like this or around the table, you know, a four player game, the sword faction, the eagle faction, uh, column faction, reef faction. You're going to keep going, playing influence cards, drawing another from the form into your hand, burning through until all the emperors are either captured and scored or none of the players have a valid place to play their cards anymore. If no one has a valid move anymore, the round's going to end. You'll move on to the next round and score and, you know, keep on going and see who wins at the end of the game. Okay, so just to finish out one more time as a quick example of the gameplay itself. Like I said, I'm going to get into the Patrician, the harder version of the game in our next video, and then we're going to do a video doing a round of play and let you guys see how it uh, actually plays out. But let's say this is our board state. This is my hand. And then I've set up some hands for opposing players. So over here is our uh, eagle, our column, wreath cards, and then my cards. Now I could take and play any one of my cards and I have to play it to a, a sword faction. All right, I have to play it down beneath one of these uppers, but there's plenty of open spaces left so I could place one down. Let's see here. Well, I have this blue eight I can place here because there's an open spot for my faction and I see that there's two blue cards here on each side. So by me placing there, there's a good chance that I could possibly capture one of these blue ones. So I could place my card there. Looking at uh, this one for our Eagle faction, let's see, where would he want to play? he could do something similar, come down over. And this is not like excellent strategy. This is me just kind of grabbing cards and showing you guys. But the Eagle faction, left side player, he sees this red card and he wants to try to arrange to, to capture it. So he places his card here. And now we see, whoop, he's actually canceled me out up here as well uh, for this one. So now this one's winning. Well, Colum is looking at this too and he's thinking, okay, well, where can I place over there? I don't know. Let me take a look and let's see what can he place that would be good. So the column decides that he's going to place. I'm trying to figure out a place that's decent for him and there's not a whole lot. Well, let's say column goes over here. All right, so he's placing here for this column because he sees this eight is actually being canceled out by this eight. So when it comes to this blue, his lower number blue will end up trumping over here, okay? And then we get down over here to our uh, wreath player and then he sees, well, these eights are canceling each other out. I've got a yellow card here. I could potentially go ahead and capture that. So I'm gonna play to this wreath right here. And that causes that to capture and actually Ignore the, <clears throat> the fact that this emperor started out surrounded from my previous example. So let's just say they were playing over there. Here, we'll pull this card off. Say so that one wasn't there when we started, so I don't uh, show you guys something bad. But he places there, and that causes this emperor to be surrounded and this emperor to be surrounded. All right. So he's surrounded by you know, a barbarian and these cards and then these. So it's up to the wreath on which way to... Uh, resolve these emperors since he placed that card. Now remember after each one of these people have played they're drawing cards back up from the forum. I'm just giving you the quick down and dirty. 
but he's looking at it, okay? And he's knowing, okay, well, if I resolve this emperor first, well, that means this blue eight's going to win and that's gonna take it off the board and this is no longer going to be captured and it's actually gonna score it for the eagle player. So I don't wanna do that. I wanna score this card first because it's the trump suit, yellow to yellow. It's the highest yellow here, which is gonna disregard the ignoring the fact that these eights are canceling each other out anyway. So he wins. So Wreath would take control. This one would get discarded. He would get this card as a score and it would take away this emperor being surrounded. So Eagle player is no longer winning over here or gonna take the card because there's no longer an influence card here and that opens it back up. That's what I was talking about earlier, that if a card is surrounded by all of the same number, for an example, that can happen, that you just keep playing and eventually, yes, it should clear itself out or that will run out of, of logical places to actually place your card. And that's it, all right? The, the game itself, the core version of it is really not that hard. It's place a card in a valid spot, uh, uh, lined up with your faction, whichever your faction happens to be, trying to put it in the best place for you, worst place for your enemy, and then scoring, resolving any effects that can happen until the round ends and then continuing on, like I said, filling up the, uh, the form. Now, there are two and three player versions of the game that involve people playing different uh, factions on the board. When it comes to a two-player game, obviously it's really easy to figure out. Uh, for example, let's say we were playing a two-player game, we would have the sword faction and the column faction being the same player, and then the wreath faction and the eagle faction being the same player. So if you were eagle, you could place here or here, you know, either side. Same for the sword, you could play here or here as far as the connectors. Really easy to understand since it's four, it breaks down into two very easily. When it comes to a three-player version of the game, it's handled a little bit differently in the fact that Sword, Eagle, and Column will each have a player, and then Wreath is kind of treated as a wild card. So no one specifically has Wreath, but everyone can place for a Wreath side. And that's it. That's the basic gist of Bar the, the Barracks Emperor. You just place your influence cards and according to the color and the, or the suit rather, the suit and the numerical value, best for you, worst for your opponent. That's the basics of it. Now, the next video, we're gonna get into how the specific special abilities and all the cards work because each one of the numerical values do have special abilities. Like what is this, the Fodorade for number six, you may play this card in a legal space containing a barbarian. If you do discard the Barbarian and any influence card it was covering, see, that changes this up tremendously, especially Barbarians. Barbarians are fun. Uh, when it comes to Barbarians, because when you do play the Patrician with Barbarians, you can get Barbarians in your hands as influence cards, and you may discard a Barbarian card to cause another Barbarian to move diagonally on the board. So let's see if we have a... A situation here. Let's say I had a Barbarian card in my hand and I discarded it. I could then choose to move this Barbarian diagonally, right? Really changes up the flow of the game on how everything works when you start getting into these special rules. And as deep and intricate as the game can be with just the numbers and the colors, with trying to trick your opponent and blocking him as far as uh, matching the numbers or trumping him with a color, when you start getting into the special rules, that's when you really start getting into the thick meatiness of the game. But like I said, we'll touch on that in the next video. I'll show you what the, the special parts of the game are. Uh, do keep in mind as we're going through this, like I said at the beginning, prototype, stream prototype copy. So don't take anything that you're seeing as final. I know I did ask him about like some of the artwork on the influence cards. Supposedly that is the final, like it's going to look very similar to that. So you guys can kind of base off of that. But it, like I said, it's prototype. There's no guarantee that it will be the final version. And I have no telling what the cards, a final map or anything like that it's going to look like. But you can estimate that it's going to be in this ballpark. But 
don't judge based on what you see here. All right, but that's going to be it for this one. Like I said, you guys stay tuned. I will have the more in-depth partition version of the game uh, up for you guys soon. And then an example round with me and Gippy's gal. All right, you guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.